Today we have a moon in Capricorn and we are heading into the full moon in Aquarius. So today I'd like to tell you a little bit more about what to expect about the upcoming full moon in Aquarius, what it means for our self-care challenge with the current moon cycle that began with the new moon in Cancer on July 17th and bringing this whole moon cycle a theme of caring, nurturing, self-care, and with this month's self-care challenge that I've been talking about, we're being invited to deepen our self-care practices, to really take a good look at our lives and what we need to be more honest with ourselves about what we truly need. And again, it doesn't necessarily have to be, uh, it doesn't necessarily have to take more time. Sometimes it's about quality uh, and not necessarily quantity, right? Quantity is always good too. But when we think about what kind of um, quality we're putting into our the self-care time that we do have through the ways we think about ourselves, the way we think uh, and allow ourselves to like really sink into that experience of deep nurturing so that we can truly regenerate and come back to center, which is um, right? Like Cancer Moon is about uh, rest. It's about the deeper parts of ourselves. It's about how we uh, regenerate and heal. And so nurturing, there's a reason why they tell you to go home and rest when you're sick, right? You need that time to heal and regenerate. So we need that on a daily basis. We need it on the regular, <laughs> we need to take care of ourselves. And if we don't, we get depleted over time. And that leads to all kinds of consequences, right? It leads to us being less functional. It leads to um, potentially even health challenges coming up. So um, so we're looking at the upcoming Aquarius full moon and how that fits into this bigger cycle. I'm Marina Orms here with your Astro Vibe for Sunday, July. 30th and um because the moon is in Capricorn today we are um building we're thinking about grounding we're thinking about structures how to get grounded and how to uh, get organized so thinking about um your life what what needs to be put in place, what, uh, how you can make a plan or um, get things organized so that things can run more smoothly for you. Um, Capricorn really deals with, uh, well, it deals with structures and foundations. And so it's our operating system. So the way that we are operating is based in uh, the foundations that we've created for ourselves. So today's uh, Capricorn moon today and tomorrow um, are bringing that theme of focusing on attending to our operating systems, how we are organized, um, how we are thinking about structures, planning, maps, you know, what do we need to get to do to put in place to um, to have that structure to keep us um, on track and moving in the direction that we want to be going and not just haphazardly uh, ending up wherever we have without putting some planning and thought and intention into it. Um, so, and we are heading into the Tuesday's full moon in Aquarius. So, um, of course, when every time we have a full moon, something is being illuminated. So just like the light of the sun is being reflected off of the moon, right? The moon is not um, uh, radiating light, right? It's reflecting light. And so the moon as a, um, as a planet is, it's not what, right. It's not a planet, but it's a planet in astrology. <laughs> Astrologers think of the sun and moon as planets, um, because they, um, moved in the Zodiac. Anyway, some technical details there, but, but in astrology, um, the sun and the moon have meaning just like the other planets do. And they are bodies that we see from here on earth and how their relationships with each other unfold. In fact, the relationship between the sun and the moon is doing this constant dance that we see in 
the sky uh, in terms of the moon's changing shape, right? Okay, so the so moon is reflected light. And in its cycle, it goes from new moon, where the moon is between the earth and the sun, and there is reflecting light off the moon. It's just not getting to earth because we're on the other side. We're essentially, we're on the dark side of the moon during a new moon. So if the moon is between the sun and the earth, we're not seeing the reflected light because we're behind it. Okay, Hopefully that makes sense. Um, and then as the moon goes through its cycle, we see a little first that first little waxing sliver of a crescent moon and then it gets bigger and bigger and that's because the moon is changing in its relationship to the earth and the sun it's orbiting around the earth but the earth is orbiting around the sun and so as uh, the moon emerges from that position between the earth and the sun we see more and more until the moon is on the opposite side of the earth from the sun. So when the when we have sun, moon, I mean sun, earth, and then moon in a line, we're on the earth in the middle, and we see that fully reflected sunlight. So that is a full moon. And when the moon is full, we are fully seeing the reflected light off of the moon. Okay. So what does that mean? It translates inter energetically for us in terms of um, something being reflected in our lives. So if the light of the sun is being reflected off the moon, something is being illuminated for us in our lives. We are seeing something that we couldn't see before, we are seeing it in a new light. We're getting a new perspective. We're having some either some aha moments or maybe some hard realizations, right? Sometimes some of the truths we don't want to see might show up and those can be um, hard. But nevertheless, it's important for us to see things. And in fact, when we are working with moon cycles, and that's what we do here, we talk about self-care, and if you want to do an intentional process of healing by uh, setting your intention with the new moon, um, and if you're following me and working with this energy, you know what I'm talking about, but we, we work with the moon cycle by setting intentions at the new moon, and then uh, that those intentions get put into motion until the full moon, and then something is revealed back to us that's going to help us get on track with those intentions. So it might be that what we put in motion at the new moon um, is revealing itself to us. It's like showing us either the results or a deeper insight of some sort into um, how we can be um, realizing <laughs> those intentions. So put, seeing them emerge right in uh, in our experience. And so that could be a healing process. It could be a creative process. It could simply be, you know, something you want to learn about, something you want to, you know, maybe you want to have more freedom, more joy in your life. That could be your intention that you set at the new moon. And then the full moon can reveal something back to you about how to have more freedom, more joy, right? So maybe it's showing you, yeah, you've been doing this thing and look, it works. You experience more freedom or joy, or maybe it's saying you've been doing this and maybe that's getting in the way of your freedom and your joy. And you might want to think about that. So in, in some way, it's revealing something to us that's going to help us further the things that we want, the things that we're intentioning intending, intending um, on our journey, on our path as we are, you know, our souls are unfolding in discovery of who we are and what we're capable of creating. So this particular full moon is in Aquarius. Aquarius is the energy of authenticity, of being your true self, of getting outside of old molds, breaking free of the box, breaking free of any sort of limitations. So interestingly enough, the energy of Aquarius follows the energy of Capricorn. So they, um, planets move, the moon moves from Capricorn into Aquarius. That's the order of the zodiac. 
And so when uh, we're, when we have the moon in Capricorn or something in Capricorn, we're working on the foundations, right? We're working on systems and infrastructure like we have been with Pluto in Capricorn, which, you know, Pluto has been in Capricorn since 2008, briefly went into Aquarius earlier this year. Um, but that's a longer term placement. An outer planet moves very slowly. So in the bigger picture of Plutonian world, <laughs> we've been working on our infrastructures, our systems, our institutions, things like government, politics, financial systems, um, how we organize healthcare systems, educational systems, sy systems in the big picture since 2008. Okay. With the moon in Capricorn, we only have two days. So we're, it's much more personal. It's much more like here and now, like, okay, you know, what is your plan for the month? What, uh, what, in what ways do you need to attend to, uh, you know, getting organized in your life, filing things or creating systems for yourself that are going to help you move forward. Get It's getting out a map of some sort. Okay. So Capricorn energy is about systems. It's about, you know, how we organize, how we create order. How we create order is we order things. And when we order things, we create some sort of system that is bound by rules. And rules necessarily limit us. <laughs> so they're there for a reason. If you're going to have a filing system, you have to have a reason, you know, a way to organize your files. So if it's by letter, you know, the out letter of the alphabet, that's a rule. Okay. If it starts with A, it goes here. That's a rule, right? We have all kinds of rules in our lives based on different systems under which we operate. And those rules help us stay organized. They help us move forward. So law and order, right? And, and our political system and the ways that things work it is based on rules and norms and other ways that we have um, that we kind of all agree, you know, for the most part, we're going to do it this way. And and that that maintains a kind of order that that allows us a certain kind of creativity. Right. We can there are things we can do when there's order that we can't do when there's chaos. Um, okay, so anyway, Capricorn energy is about order and getting organized and creating systems. What Aquarius does is it rebels against the order. So we this is a natural progression of the systems uh, of, of the uh, energies of our zodiac and how the planets move and how the energies unfold in our lives. So when the moon goes from Capricorn to Aquarius, we get we suddenly get like this this urge to move to break free to stop being bound by the rules you know to um to rebel to uh object you know to to and we might have um higher ideals like reasons that are uh that feel important, right? That that could be based in the future, that could be in a higher way of thinking about things, um, thinking outside the box, right? New solutions to old problems. It's like, why are we doing it that way when we could be um, having so much more, you know, authenticity or truth or freedom? And those are all themes that go with Aquarian energy. So we get... Um, and, and Aquarius is a fixed sign, so we can get attached to our ideas and our ideals and our vision of the future and the way we think it should be. So, um, but we also have this, this energy, this spirit of breaking free, of doing things our own way, not being bound by the rules, the customs, the norms of the past. So again, Capricorn is conservative. It likes to keep things the way they are. It is looking to the past. You know, let's just keep it the way it's always been. It's always worked for us, right? As I said, you know, of course, there are there are some good things about that, right? It helps keep order. It helps us, you know, uh, work together. And in many cases, it can help us create. But the energy of Aquarius is about breaking free of the way we've seen things in the past. And it is also absolutely essential to our creativity, to our ability to move forward, to our ability to evolve 
as we move into the future. And um, I, this is a particularly important Aquarius. I mean, it's they're all important. All the full moons have some message that they're bringing, something that's being revealed, something we're discovering. And it's got some similar qualities, but it also might be unique for each of us. Like, what is the message you need to hear might be different from what your neighbor needs to hear. It's, it's what's emerging in consciousness and it might be um, showing up in different ways for different people but there's a shift there's a feeling of uh, seeing things in new ways there's a theme or a quality of breaking free of the limitations of the past and so thank you for bearing with me through that explanation because um, it helps you ground in a deeper understanding of what this full moon is really about it's really about um our ability to see things in new ways to break free of the past and because this is a not only a full moon in Aquarius, but during the full moon, the moon and the sun will both square uh, or form a 90 degree angle with a uh, third planet, Jupiter. Additionally, so Jupiter's in Taurus, T-square and fixed signs. Um, we also have the moon in Aquarius ruled by Uranus. Uranus is in Taurus. That's, you know, so Uranus and Jupiter, both in Taurus, fixed signs. Um, Uranus is the planet of liberation, of freedom, of shakeup, of change, of, of bringing uh, breakthroughs, new ideas, new ways of seeing things. And so I've talked about this before, but the planet Uranus, which is the planet of shakeup and change and breakthrough and freedom, is in Taurus, which is a, an earth sign, it likes stability, predictability, routine. And so what you end up with is we're in this time period of several years while Uranus is in Taurus that we're bringing in a new normal. We are shaking things up in terms of how we view reality, how uh, we see the future, how we um, understand normal and what that looks like and uh, what brings stability to our lives, what, you know, our, our routines, there's shake up to our routines, there's shake up to how we understand reality itself because reality is our normal right so um so things happening in a bigger picture and uh pluto is squaring the lunar nodes you might have heard about that um that's a bigger process of evolutionary change shift transformation so the um the the mean nodes uh will be in an exact square with Pluto on August 3rd. And so this full moon on August 1st, very, very close to that date. And uh, that those energies are all creating this giant pressure to evolve, to transform. Um, we've got Venus retrograde in Leo, another fixed sign. So these, these themes of um, what we do, how we function, what we see as uh, normal and how we keep things going to day to day are in a process of evolution, of shift, of change, of bringing in a new normal. And the Plutonian energy of truth, of, of bringing hidden truths to the surface and um, some of these themes that are happening in the world showing up in the news, right? I mean, one is... Um, you know, a reckoning for a certain former president and some uh, legal things happening in that area. Another is, um, you know, the, the disclosure of um, UAPs and what's going on with the information around that. And so whatever you believe about that, whatever you've seen or, you know, whatever information uh, you trust or don't trust, um, what is definitely true about that experience of the UFO, UAP um, shift, what's happening is there's a shift in our consciousness, our human ways of talking about it, of understanding it, of 
a new normal, right? These, these radical transformative notions that have just simply not been mainstream. Maybe they've been on the fringes, but um, starting to come forth in a way that is tangible. Um, I suspect that will continue to happen. It's going to be a long-term process of people um, integrating this information because it is such a radical shift in our understanding of reality. It's like so, it's like too much to process all at once. And I'm not even I'm I'm not even advocating for whether it's true or right or not. I'm just speaking from a perspective of how this information is emerging in the collective consciousness, this idea that there is intelligent life, advanced civilizations um, that have been uh, hidden, covered up, right? Kept from the light of day and very Plutonian for it to surface and uh, come into our awareness as even a topic of discussion and uh, becoming aware of that. So how it's being discussed in the public and really, you know, there's all kinds of messages and information out there and, uh, uh, you know, that's all going to get sorted out until we arrive at a place where we kind of agree on, you know, here's what is reality and here's what most people agree is true. And we, you know, we're still in the process of all of this being shaken up right now. So we don't know um, yet where that will end up. And the collective, so, so the collective experience of normal, of reality is, in the process of being transformed. And that is the nature of evolution, evolutionary change. And when you look back at human history and themes that have shown up in different points and ways that people's ideas, ways of thinking, beliefs have changed, ways things have emerged in our culture, you know, at different points, you know, it was art, you know, or in history, um, it was art or it was a, a, a plague or whatever it was, like whatever was showing up in hi history um, correlates with the energies of what the planets um, are, you know, it's just like the planets create a language that's helping us understand and uh, talk about the qualities that we're experiencing at a particular time in history. So what the planets are saying now um, is that we're in a time of change, of evolution, that our ideas of what is normal, of what is real, of what we can count on and depend on are in the process of being shaken up. <laughs> we don't know yet where they will land, what that will look like, what will we will believe going forward. But I can say that this full moon in Aquarius is asking us to look at you know, how are we thinking about things and um, what is a radical new like paradigm shift in terms of how we might think, how what we and what we might believe because of the square to Jupiter. So Jupiter is a planet of um, where, where we place our faith and trust. So it has to do with uh, belief systems, paradigms, leaps of faith things we believe in, things we have faith in. So it's our belief systems and it is our, our um, paradigm in terms of what it is we believe, especially in the collective. Um, because an individual can have beliefs that are, you know, quote unquote out there, but it's it's when it shifts in collective consciousness and when sort of the, the majority of people believe something, that's kind of a different thing, right? Now you're talking more about shared reality and what we all sort of believe and agree on together. So um, so those are themes that are going to be up around this full moon and, and how you want to think about your own self-care and your own, you know, best way of taking care of yourself and aligning with these energies. Um, I would say open your mind. So uh, for years and years and years, I've been talking about when we have an Aquarius moon, you want to think about your mind as like your attic. <laughs> and if you go up in your attic and it's covered with cobwebs and dust, you know, like you can't find anything. So 
think about your mind as being cluttered with old thoughts that have sort of grown some dust, right? Is Are you recirculating some old thoughts because they're easy um, to ways of understanding yourself and the world? So clearing out those cobwebs and thinking of your mind as just airing out, releasing old thoughts, releasing old ways of understanding and letting your mind be empty. So um, great, uh, you know, it's a great Buddhist practice, right? Kind of emptying your mind, med meditatively um, uh, uh, opening, right? And, and um, being, a way of being um, that isn't about thinking or drawing conclusions or interpreting things. So, so, and we, you know, so much of this is about self-care when you think of, you know, oh, I can't have this, or I'm, um, I'm not good enough to do that, or this is already decided. And, you know, it's just let go of those thoughts because those are limiting thoughts. Simply let go of them, just like you're cleaning out your attic you're, you know, airing it out, bring in some light, some sunshine, some fresh air, just let it be open and clean. And in that open state, your mind is receptive to new ways of seeing things. So that's how you want to think about this Aquarius full moon is it's an opportunity to have new ideas occur to you new solutions that you might think of, new uh, new ideas, uh, outside the box thinking, a new perspective on things that have been, you know, felt like limitations or challenges in your life, things that you haven't been able to overcome, things, you know, and we think of it like, oh, I haven't been able to overcome this, so therefore I am not able to overcome this. That th there's absolutely no reason why that is true, right? Just because you haven't overcome it yet has absolutely no bearing on what's going to happen next. <laughs> it's only that we repeat that thought and we think to ourselves, oh, I haven't overcome that. that therefore, I am unable to overcome that. That act actually makes no sense if you think about it. So because what if you are... What if you're 99% of the way there and you just gave up because you're like, ah, I haven't gotten there yet, but maybe tomorrow is the day, maybe next month, maybe next year, maybe 10 years from now, maybe a hundred years from now. I don't know. The point is, is that who are you to think that you should give up because you haven't, you know, done whatever it is you think you should have done by now. So, um, so clearing out those old thoughts, clearing out the limiting thoughts, letting your, your uh, mind be open, empty, available for new ideas, new perspectives, something new to occur to you. And you don't know what that's going to be, right? It'll, it'll just pop in <laughs> like when you're in the shower or when you're on a walk or um, driving to work and you're just spacing out and all of a sudden you have this idea. Where did it come from? I don't know. But I do know that when the moon is full in Aquarius, the energies are there to support that. Um, so open yourself to them, Be, you know, make yourself the lightning rod on purpose so that you don't get struck by lightning um, out of the blue in ways that throw you, right? When you're conscious and intentional, you know, this is the healing that I want in my life. This is the healing that I want for the world. And so now you've got your ship pointed in the right direction because you're stating that as an intention. This is the healing that I want to see. And now what you're saying to those Aquarian energies is propel me in this direction. And if you have not chosen a direction, that lightning is going to come in and it's going to throw you willy nilly in some random direction. <laughs> you may or may not like it. Okay, so 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 it's pointing your ship in that direction through stating to yourself, this is where I want to be, this is where I'm heading, this these are the changes I want to be part of creating. And then you're opening your mind, clearing out the cobwebs of the old limiting thoughts to say, I'm here, I'm available, I am ready to be propelled in this 
direction and I'm willing to be propelled in this direction. Because when we open ourselves to that feeling of freedom, it activates our true authentic selves. It allows us to um, be open to new ideas and to our own paradigm shifts that are going to allow us to become something new. And that's what we want, right? We want to let go of the old things that don't work anymore and step into the new ones that are more in alignment with what feels really important to us in our lives. And um, I just want to share one quick thing about uh, Sinead O'Connor, um, sadly, tragically, uh, you know, left this planet um, on the 26th of July. And um, just the there's so much about that that um, is meaningful to me. And of course, the timing and the same timing as we're talking about these emergence of deeper truths and what happens when someone dies. Um, a, an artist who is complex, multifaceted, as is the truth, by the way, right? The more complex, the more complicated, the more problematic and troublesome we are, the more we are capable of um, holding a complex truth. And the world is in situations of complex truth and grappling with those complex truths and transforming, right, healing, healing some of the um, ways we've been in the past that we, that aren't really serving us going forward. And um, so I just really want to honor her as an artist, um, as a truth teller, um, as someone who was, of course, ahead of her time, as is the Aquarian energy, um, always future oriented, right? But um but sometimes detached, sometimes having a hard time connecting in with um, the love and receptivity that uh, may be in the world, but may uh, be hard to connect to. So, um, so think about how that impacts you and how you are an artist and a truth teller. And because her, her spirit is, um, you know, we are all carrying that on as we step more fully into our lives and our true selves. And um, there's so much more healing and work to be done and um, her, you know, contribution to feminism and to empowerment of, you know, in so many ways, um, that is awakening within us as well. And when, when we have a, a figurehead, a symbol of someone who, who holds that energy, um, and we, we kind of look to them as, you know, this, this, uh, person is holding that energy for us, for the culture, for the collective. And then that person passes on that gets disseminated into each of us and it is up to us to then further that mission that work that truth um that that person represented and uh so so stepping into that and uh i hope that inspires you if you haven't uh if you're not familiar with her work i highly recommend you listen to some of her music it's just you know it's not um it's transformative art is what it is. And so what I find is that when I listen to her music, I just have to take it in. Um, I have to let it move through me. I have to let it move me. And I don't know where it's um, gonna take me, but but th there's the Scorpionic Aquarian energy being activated within us. And of course the Leo and Taurus. So really in alignment with these fixed signs and how we become ourselves, how we create the world around us and how we participate in that and um and what it means for who we are and our own journey thank you so much for being here i'm marina orms you can learn more about me at astrologyheals.com i sure um, am grateful for those of you who have subscribed to this youtube channel it helps me um, support my work helps my work get out there. It helps more people find me. And so if you haven't subscribed yet, now is the perfect time. Thank you so much for your comments, your likes, your shares. If you're interested in working with me, check it, check out my work and how to book time with me at astrologyheals.com. 
We'll see you next time. I'm here every day with astrology for unshakable self-care. I hope that your self-care challenge is unfolding in, uh, and deepening you into your truth. All right. I'll see you next time. Bye for now.